G'day everyone and welcome to part two of the modem and routers explained. Today we're taking a deep dive into the DSL page of your modem router for your NBN fiber to the node connection. Let's get started. DSL line, aka digital subscriber line. The DSL is a family of technologies that are used to transmit digital data over telephone lines. In telecommunications marketing, the term DSL is widely understood to mean asymmetrical digital subscriber line, aka ADSL, the most commonly installed DSL technology for internet access. Now, DSL services can be delivered simultaneously with wired telephone services on the same telephone line since DSL uses higher frequency bands for data. On the customer premises, a DSL filter on each non-DSL outlet blocks any high frequency interference to enable simultaneous use of the voice and DSL services. No more dial up where you have to disconnect to make a phone call. The bit rate of consumer DSL services typically ranges from 256 kilobits to over 100 megabits in the direction to the customer, aka downstream. Now, depending on DSL technology, line condition and service level implementation. In ADSL, the data throughput in the upstream direction to the service provider is much lower, hence the designation of asymmetrical services. Now, in symmetrical digital subscriber lines, aka SDSL services, the downstream and upstream data rates are equal. VDSL 2. Now, in your fiber to the node modem, you will see VDSL 2. Now, VDSL1 also exists, and VDSL stands for Very High Speed Digital Subscriber Line. It is a digital subscriber line DSL technology that provides data transmissions faster than ADSL. VDSL offers speeds of up to 52 megabits downstream and 60 megabits upstream over a single flat, untwisted, or twisted pair of copper wires using the frequency band from 25 kilohertz to 12 megahertz. These rates mean that VDSL is capable of supporting applications such as high definition television, as well as telephone services, voice over IP, and general internet access over a single connection. VDSL is deployed over existing wiring used for analog telephone services and lower speed DSL connections. This standard was approved by the International Telecommunication Union in November 2001, and Australia got it a few years later. Now, if you are on fiber to the node, you will have VDSL 2 not one, and if you have one, that's very confusing. But in any case, second generation systems VDSL2 approved in February 2006 use frequencies of up to 30 megahertz to provide data rates exceeding 100 megabits a second, simultaneously in both the upstream and downstream directions. The maximum available bit rate is achieved at a range of about 300 meters and performance degrades as local loop attenuation increases. And we'll talk about that in a moment. But basically, no copper line that is on VDSL2 should be higher than 300 meters. Annex type. For ADSL, VDSL routers, there are two types of WAN interfaces. One is Annex A, which is for ADSL, and Annex B, which is for ADSL over ISDN. Now, ISDN is Integrated Service Digital Network. It is a circuit switch telephone network system which also provides access to packet switch networks designed to allow digital transmission of voice and data over ordinary telephone copper wires, resulting in potentially better voice quality than an analog phone can provide. We may tell the Annex type by checking the type of color of the DSL port. Most homes will have Annex Type A in Australia. Upstream is your upload speed. Downstream is your download speed. Current rate in kilobits per second is your current connected speed. Max rate is the max potential on this connection. SNR margin measured in decibel. Now SNR margin, aka noise margin, is the difference between the actual SNR and the minimal SNR required to sync at a specific speed. It can be simplified to the difference between the actual signal and the signal required to sync. And sync is basically being connected. It is normally measured in decibels. It is in essence a buffer that allows for fluctuations in SNR without dropping the connection. SNR margin is often confused and used interchangeably with just SNR. Now higher SNR margin numbers indicate cleaner, stronger signals with less background noise and the higher the SNR margin is the more stable the connection. In some instances interleaving can help raise the noise margin to an acceptable level. Note that there may be some short-term burst of noise that may drop the margin, but due to the sampling time of measurement utility in your modem, it will not necessarily show up in its interface. This is a setting you get from your RSP where you can say, hey, give me higher speeds, but the stability might be lower. Give me lower speeds and make the stability really high. Now, some DSL routers display both the actual SNR and the signal to noise margin, SNR margin, as a separate value, which again is the difference between an actual SNR and the SNR required to sync 
at a specific speed. Line attenuation. Now line attenuation aka loss is a measure of how much the signal has degraded between the D slam aka the node down your street and the modem. But this is largely a function of the distance from the exchange and the node. The lower the dB, the better for this measurement. Attenuation is logarithmic and each 3 dB of attenuation halves the strength of the signal power received. So 20 dB and below is outstanding, 20 to 30 is excellent, 30 to 40 is very good, 40 to 50 is good, 50 to 60 is poor and may experience connectivity issues and 60 above is bad and will experience connectivity issues. The standard signal attenuation spread for a given speed is somewhere in the region of 15 to 20 for ADSL 2 plus and VDSL 2 plus, which is very similar and 25 to 30 on the ADSL 1 speed. All right, and that's all I have for you today. I am compiling more information like this and hope to create more videos like this to explain some of the technologies behind your internet and the NBN. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I know it was a lot of information, but if you did like it, then tap that like button. And if you would like to see more, please consider subscribing. And if you would like to support this channel, then check the description for ways to do so. Also, if you would like to see any other topics done in a video like this, then please let me know in the comments below. This video was in fact a suggestion. So thanks again to everyone who has suggested ideas so far. I will get to them as soon as I can. Thank you very much for watching. I'll catch you all in another one. Bye.